For those that uh, don't know, we've had quite a little snowstorm for Oklahoma this week. We got about eight inches of snow and a little bit of ice, and so, you know, uh, things were shut down. We had to shut down the church for mainly for fear of people slipping and falling on the on the ice. So, you know, I'm I'm fairly, you know, I'm I'm grizzled. I've been at this a long time, you know, and I'm uh, I consider myself a fairly disciplined person. And you think, oh, that's okay. I'm just going to pray the same at home. How many found out? <laughs> Uh, it's not the same at home. It just is not. I got in some prayer, and that's good. But I'm telling you, it is, it is, uh, it's good to come here when we can. It's much easier to pray. Dave used to say, he said, these walls have been saturated with prayer, you know. And I believe there is angelic help here. I can't see them. I've never seen them, but I believe there's a, a posting. I just know it's a whole lot easier to pray here, and there's way less distractions, you know, way less. So this week we only have Wednesday, but let's take full advantage of it. Yes, sir. I was blessed to listen to the beginning of Pastor Bronk's service right before we left to come down here, the morning service. And some prophecy began to come forward again through him. Um, and for calling in the lost, the, one that really, the part that really struck me was many of us have relatives or close friends who have resisted, I think it said the way it said it there, this message, but really they've resisted the gospel, a lot of them. Uh, and then maybe if they are in the kingdom, they have resisted this kind, the message that comes forward from here. <laughs> so, you know, the Lord could go two ways. Well, blast them in my name. and No, no. no but it wasn't like that at all. He says, don't give up on them. And with a new tenderness keep going after them like in the spirit <clears throat> and for calling in the lost I think that's a perfect perfect thing and we're picking up a little bit from uh, the last calling in the lost service that we have got to more than ever more than ever keep our loved ones up before the Lord there is a revival coming uh, how do I say it better there is a fresh outpouring coming Maybe it's a fresh reception of the Holy Spirit. All I know is things are going to change. And when the, <clears throat> when the power gets turned up, when the power, let's say it this way, when the power is in manifestation, judgment always comes with that. It always does. You read the book of Acts, and Ananias and Sapphira, really all they did was lie about an offering. <laughs> Dear Lord, if that level of judgment was in America today, how many hundreds of preachers would fall dead in the pulpit on any given Sunday for lying about offerings? You know? But judgment is going to come strong. So we need to, while we still have time, we need to be praying, calling in our lost loved ones, calling them saved, everything that we have been trained to do. I'm not going to try and reteach last week's message. But everything that we've been trained to do, this is sure the time to do it. I'm also going to hold up again our, our prayer center confessions. Uh, you know, the first service of, the, of calling in the lost was in 1997. That's a spell. We've been at it a while. I believe God commends your faithfulness for staying at it when it's hardly any fruit to show. But there's going to be a lot of fruit to show. What kind of fruit? Everything that we say is going to come to pass exactly the way we've been saying it. Because Jesus said it would. We shall have what we say. So, <clears throat> again, I'm reminded, I feel, I feel like the Lord is saying, we need to turn it up, not, not stop. The, the enemy wants us to stop. And I felt the same kind of discouragement you felt. I felt the same kind of, why do you keep doing this after all those years? That same old devil that just keeps saying, did God say? Well, yes, God said. God said. He gave us instruction to do this. Until he tells us different, we're going to keep doing it. And uh, if anything, we need to turn it up. So I'm recommending again that if you don't have a set of these, you need to get a set of these. Uh, the prayer center confessions, have them at home with you. We need to start doing it more than just once a week. We need to start doing it... Uh, at least once a day, I think. And uh, i got to discipline myself to that. That's not in my routine. 
You know what that means? Here's that word that everybody loves. Well, not the, <laughs> yeah, everybody loves fasting, but that's not the one. That ha doesn't, not the one I had in mind at that moment. <laughs> Billy's always helping me, you know. Another one, <laughs> prophesy. <laughs> Speak the word of the Lord, my brother. <laughs> now, the word I had in mind that everybody, everybody just loves is change. Especially when it comes to changing your daily routine, changing your life. It takes a while to establish a new pattern. It takes discipline to establish a new pattern. And if I'm going to incorporate this instruction into my life, just like you, I'm going to have to do something on purpose or it's not going to change. And uh, <laughs> even my dad, I grew, up with, I grew up with this phrase, my dad and mom, there's no such thing as change without change. <laughs> And that is so absolutely true. I want to change. What are you going to do different? Nothing. Well, nothing's going to change either. And you can take that to the bank. I mean, that's absolutely. What's that definition of insanity? Keep doing the same thing and expect different results? No. It requires some discipline. So I'm, going to, I'm working on Gary. If he please would work on you. I'm not going to work on you. Is that okay? <laughs> you need to work on you. And get, let's get these... Let's don't turn it. Let's do the opposite of what the devil wants. Instead of stopping, let's turn it up. Let's double down. And again, I've got, I've, boy, I've got some good lessons prepared. And I don't think we're going to go that way again tonight. I, uh, this morning's service to me is a, a blur. But I, I heard good reports that it ministered to a lot of people. But... Uh, so I don't, I don't really know what I said and what I didn't say exactly. But I want to share this because I see it again. I'm, right now I'm seeing those floodgates. I don't know if I mentioned that this morning or not. But it's, uh, I saw a documentary one time on the building of the Panama Canal and those huge big metal gates that separate the different chambers as they change the elevation of the ships going from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And uh, I guess vice versa. I guess they go both ways. And... Uh, well, if you've ever seen those gates open while they're changing the elevation level, man, I mean, that, that water comes pouring through those gates like the power is amazing. And ever since, even that afternoon, Saturday afternoon, you know, even after we heard the news about Pastor Dave's home going, I want to say again, it was, just, it was hurtful, loss, our father in the faith, and, you know, our pastor, but at the same time, I felt this incredible peace, and others have also, like it's okay. But even Saturday afternoon, I began seeing this image of these floodgates opening and the rushing power of all that water come pouring through. I don't know how it's connected. I just know it is connected. We're in a change of seasons. You, all this preparation time has not been for no reason. I hear, maybe it's just me, buckle up, buttercup. You know, it's better hang on. I'm telling you, you've been wanting to ride. It's about time to ride, you know. And so this is not a time for, it's, it's, it's okay to mourn and, and know the loss. And I'm really glad we're having that memorial service Saturday for Pastor Dave. And it, it's part of the healing process, you know. But, oh, you know he would be here going, you show me your dust. This is a time to put in effect everything that, that, I, that God gave me to teach you. And I believe, you know, the message did come to maturity. The Lord said that to Dave himself. And it's time for us to incorporate everything that Pastor Dave taught us. Because I believe the floodgates are really, really about to open. So when it comes to your loved ones, again, I, see, I talked last time about a ledger that I have at home and writing the names of these certain loved ones. And I haven't done it myself. I, I don't know what happened during the it's some, you know, snow came and my brain left or something. I, I don't know. But it, that's over. <laughs> brain has returned. <laughs> but I've got certain, I've got grandchildren that, you know, he said, well, are they saved? He said, well, you'd have to say nominally, you know, at best. That's not good enough. Jesus doesn't like that. 
I would that you were hot or cold, not lukewarm. So I want, I want all of my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids on fire. And they need, they need prayer. They, they need us speaking the word over them and confessing the word over them. I encourage you to listen to that prophecy that came through Pastor Bronk this morning. Some really strong instruction in it. Uh, I, as I heard the, the prophecy, I was hearing some of the previous prophecies about there's going to be people that come once the power really starts to be manifest and they're going to try and hijack it. They're going to try and appropriate it. And they're going to try and build fame off of it for themselves. And even it has to do with money for, for filthy lucre. So we have instruction from the Holy Ghost what to do and what not to do. So I really recommend that prophecy to you. It's, I don't have it yet. I just heard it. We just heard it right before we left, a little before we left the house. How many enjoy the ending of the service today? I got so many good reports from that. And, uh, who knows what form the services are going to take. And I don't care. I know you don't care. I just want Jesus to be Lord. And I want the Holy Spirit to have full sway. And I want to get out of his way. I told the Lord, you know, the, <laughs> you know it's amazing that God chose a one-eyed black man named William Seymour. You know, couldn't even attend a white church at the time. So God chooses this one-eyed black man through whom he restored the Pentecostal outpouring in the early 1900s. Isn't that just like God? And I've, I've, I've read where he would take a, a box, like a shoe box, you know, big shoe box, and just put it over his head because he didn't want to have any, anything to do with it. And just, they'd just pray until God came. I've told God I'm willing to wear a shoe box. <laughs> but that's not what he wants. What he wants is obedience. Yes, sir. Carriando to Libri, come on. Frandora Malaki. Randara. Hans knows exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> he is preaching to you. I'm just interpreting. Frotolike, Carriandara Maqua. Frandara Mike, Carriandara Stada Mike. See, sometimes it comes in the form of prophecy. But prophecy is not always, yea, thus saith the Lord about something in the future. When you deliver the mind of Christ, that is prophecy. Yes, sir. If you have not... Okay, the original ten prophecies that we called the blueprint. And I think it's blueprint 2020. Now, there's been a lot of prophecies since. But if you really study them, you'll see they all build on that foundation. Somebody called me from out of state... Uh, this weekend, hungry, hungry, hungry for more. And this person knows God, really knows God. Hungry, hungry. And I, I felt the instruction of the Lord. I said, have you ever heard the blueprint that we have? And it, no, he'd never had, never heard it. So I recommended it to him. In fact, I even sent him the link from Brock's website where they've got all ten of them together, you know, and the PDF so he could read along while he listened. He said, boy, that's exactly what he needed to hear. So then I listened to it again myself. Now, see, at the time when it first came, uh, I stopped counting after 60 times. I, I put little hash marks in my Bible. I think we all did. I stopped counting after 60 times because I wanted it to be in me. But now, those original 10, I probably have not heard, except maybe here while we're in prayer. But, I mean, just really concentrate and listen. I had not heard myself in quite a while, several months. Boy, I listen to him again. We are the most blessed and at the same time most accountable people on planet Earth. What are we going to say to him on that day? What are we going to say? I mean, he has bent down, if you'll allow me. He has bent down low and given us the most precise, detailed instruction of what to do. He loves us. You're the apple of his eye. He's got every one of our faces on the palm of his hand. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But dear God. 
He has bent low to tell us what to do in order that his, his will can be done on planet earth the way it is in heaven. And we are blessed. See, I count myself, I must be God's favorite. I have to be. Number one, I, he, he let me marry Sue. <laughs> I mean, but what I really mean, though, is he has, of all the peoples on earth, we got to sit under the teaching of Pastor Dave Wilberson for a quarter century. We are blessed. We are favored. But we are accountable. I recommend to you because I believe he's recommending to you. Listen to those first ten again. Might be good to have them printed out or be looking on your device, the PDF at the same time. Oh, it rekindled a fire in me. It was already in me pretty good, but it rekindled it in me again. We are going to have revival. That one that says Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John will be restored in the earth. Dear God, if we had no promise but that. No promise but just that one, but there's a lot more. But just that one. He's been, again, talking to me about Jesus meetings instead of church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He wants me to read again that first paragraph that I read this morning from that prophecy. All right. This is the one that came on December 12th, 2021. The title of it is, You or Else, I Have No Plan B. Now, these first statements, again. See, this revival that's coming is going to cause this. There is coming a redefining to, hum to humanity of what the church is and the true message of Christ. Say it with me. There is coming a redefining, coming a redefining to, humanity, to humanity, the whole world, the whole world of, what the church is, of what the church is and the true message of Christ. And the true message of Christ. Mm. Jesus would not recognize most church services as being one of his services. And I think even ours. Because as you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which is going to be restored, he said, Jesus would teach, all right. He says he would teach, he would preach, but then he would heal. I remember being, I, I, all I can do is follow him. I remember being in South Korea, and I was so blessed one year to get to go to Yanji Cho's church, which at the time was the largest church on planet Earth. I don't know if it still is. On Yoida Island, Yoida Island, the service was in Korean. I couldn't understand what they were saying, but I, I, knew, I could tell the Spirit of God was there. I don't know what the message was, but God had me chained. They set me down, and as soon as they left, God said, move. <laughs> God had me sit in a place where I could see the wheelchair section. I was up in the balcony, so I had to move where I could see down there where the wheelchair section was. Now, people got saved. There were several people. I could tell what was going on. Pe several people got saved during that service. And they have church all day. I mean, on Sunday, every hour, hour and a half, 10,000 people out, 10,000 people in. 10,000 people out, 10,000 people in. Boy, if they have people get saved at each one of those services... Over a long period of time, that's a lot of people getting saved. But the Lord had me watching the wheelchair section because Yanji Cho and his team is known for healing. They're known for signs and wonders. But in that service, all I can do is report on the one I was at. A team went down. Now, Yanji Cho himself wasn't at that service. But he has teams that have been trained. All I can tell you in that particular service, out of maybe... Oh, wheelchairs, there were probably eight or nine. Uh, people on crutches, there were more. And then other people in that section to be prayed for. I don't know what was wrong with them, but something was wrong. Well, they had a, teams of several, two, two and two, go down and minister to them. But as far as I could tell, and again, everything was in Korean. But as far as I could tell, nobody actually got healed. 
Everyone that came in in a wheelchair, I do know this, everyone that came in in a wheelchair left in a wheelchair. And I heard him say, that is not my will. That is not my will. Then I heard him say, do not stop praying the mysteries. Do not stop. But I don't know what I mean. Over the weekend, a simple little verse kept coming to me. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he, personal pronoun, he, will guide you into all truth. Well, Jesus is the truth. See, the true message of Christ, the true message of Christ, the real truth is going to come out. And it's not what the church has thought. The real truth is, every one of those people should have got up out of that, out of that wheelchair. Every single one of them. Homer Betancourt should not go another day without eyesight. Tommy Perez should come out of the chair. And Mar- Marvinus's daughter, Victoria, should come up to this pulpit and give great testimony, articulate very well what great things the Lord has done for her. That's church. So I kept hearing again that simple verse, when he has come, he, he will guide you into all truth. See, there's nowhere on planet Earth people we can go. There just isn't anywhere. There's no hospital that has any help for someone like um, Victoria, born with a partial brain. Who can, where do you take somebody to get the rest of a brain? You know, there isn't anywhere. But see, in my spirit that where the, all things are possible, I just don't have any problem at all. I know that I know if we could get Victoria into Jesus' hands. That girl's coming away fully with her fully formed brain, perfect and articulating just fine. I know that. Who can get us from where we are to there? No wonder he sent us the Holy Spirit. He's the only one. If somewhere on earth they were able to do that and do it on a regular basis. I mean, I know anything's possible by the gifts, but I'm talking on a regular basis, like at Jesus' meetings. You know, we've done that before. I thought about doing it again tonight, going through those five different revival meetings in the book of Matthew. Stay in that book so you know you're not repeating. Five different services where it says plainly, all of them, all of them were healed. See, that's a Jesus service. That is a Jesus service. Who can get us? That is absolutely his will. Who can get us from where we are? As much as we want it, who can get us from where we are to there? It's only the Holy Spirit. There's no point in rolling really in seminar or, or seminary or seminar. Seminary or no one's there. I think once somebody's there, it can be taught. But there isn't anybody. So no wonder he keeps telling us. Besides the worship, yes, we're to worship. Yes, we're to fast. Yes, we're to uh, confess the word and meditate the word. But in that blueprint, over and over and over, he says, yield yourself to let my spirit pray the mysteries through you. Over and over. Why? He's the only one that can get us there. He's the only one. We can all read the words. I can quote. Hans can come up here and quote passages out of Matthew. You can too. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. But saying it and walking in it, obviously, is two different things. Well, he wants us walking in it. So no wonder, no wonder, there's no other person. There is no other he. <laughs> there is no other he or she that can get us there right now. Now, he, he assures us that once... that the, I'd say it again the way he said it to me, just my gift with, as a teacher. And I love how he said it, because he didn't say if. He said, talking to me personally, he said, Now when the miracles and the healings are flowing from your fingertips like water, I could just stop and worship right there, because he didn't say if. He said, when that happens, don't think I've suddenly changed your calling to be a traveling evangelist. And that there will be a temptation to do that. No, you are a teacher. You are to remain here. And train others to do the same thing. Well, that's what he wants. That's what he's going to get. But see, that tells me it can be taught. Can be taught. But still, he can't. I started to give you a wonderful message on fasting tonight. 
Again, you can read about fasting. You can learn about fasting. You can hear other people talk about their experiences on fasting. Nothing prepares you for fasting except fasting. <laughs> it's just exactly like Mike Tyson says. You know, it's, oh, yeah, everybody has a plan until I hit them in the mouth. <laughs> fasting hits you square in the mouth. Your emotions, everything in you doesn't like it. Your body doesn't like it. It's a war of wills, if you'll allow me. It's where you can go into boot camp in a war that won't kill you. And you can on purpose strike up a war with your flesh. The, when I say flesh, I don't mean just the body. I want to say it this way. You can strike up a war with your will versus his will. The first confession that I have on my fasting sheet is from Matthew I think it's chapter 9. I'm not sure. Angie will put the right one up there. <laughs> Where Jesus says, no, while the bridegroom's with them, my, my disciples don't fast. But the day will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away. And in those days, then shall they fast. I remember the day those four words just stood up off the page. Then shall they fast. So the first confession I have, it is the will of my Lord that I fast. As his disciple, it is the will of my Lord that I fast. Okay. Once you know his will, aren't we supposed to do it? Well, I found out as soon as I start doing his will, there's another will arises within me. My flesh doesn't like fasting. It thinks it's false doctrine. <laughs> It'll neg I loved how Alan said he, his, his flesh negotiated with him in the early days of fasting. I'll just have a little juice. Mm -hmm. you know, the, I like to embellish a little, but you know, the, you know the flesh. Here you're not letting it have anything but water. Just give me a little juice. I mean, it's not food. Just liquid. Give me a little juice. Okay, give it a little juice. You'd think it's going to stop, right? Be happy with that? No, pretty soon that evolves to a V8, which evolves to a milkshake, which Alan said, which evolved to anything I could blend. <laughs> Somebody said, put a steak in that blender. <laughs> well, that's the flesh thing. And it's going to do its best to stop you. But fasting, this kind, come, this kind of unbelief cometh not out but by prayer and fasting. Well, we're in fasting season. And we're all, yes, sir. He's been showing me so much out of the Lord's Prayer that I never knew. I'm sure other people know it, but I didn't know it. When we pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth. When Jesus would pray that, he understood. He understood. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as in heaven. When he prays that, he means through me. He means through him. He wants us to understand that when we pray it, because he told us to pray it, God's will, his kingdom comes and his will is done through us because we are his body. The church is his body. That's a redefining of the church, not a building. It's not a club. It's not an organization. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. Dave says, you know why, he, you know why they, they had him ride in on a donkey that no one had ever rid on? as a colt, you know, a donkey. You know, donkeys are kind of wild, you know, if they've never been ridden. Why, why, would, why did it need to be a colt that had never been ridden? Jesus is showing he's able to tame your flesh. <laughs> he, he can ride in on us if we let him. My flesh, every time I try and fast, it starts to bucking. <laughs> Jumping around, no, no, no. Die. <laughs> I hope you can tell I'm just trying to follow. Double down, people. Triple down. Don't 
the whole parable of Mark chapter 4. All of us cut our teeth. You know, I heard so many messages on Mark chapter 4 in the early days. I, it's almost like Romans 8 later. Oh, God, not Mark 4 again, you know. And uh, there's such a maturing process because all, every level of that is true. Uh, where Sue and I started, Mark, you sow the seed, which is the word. If you need healing, you sow the seed, the word of healing. You, how do you sow it? Well, you confess it, and you pray over it, and you say it, and, and you do that, and you do that, and then the word becomes flesh, and, and you're healed. That's a valid level. It'll always be a valid level. Same thing with prosperity when we had me walk the floor with those verses. And you can do the same with your marriage. You can do the same with your kids. That's all valid. It's all true. But it's, it's a, there's a maturity beyond there. See, where he's calling us to now, Jesus is the Word. He is the seed that God sowed in all of us. And the fruit, see, we're the, we're the tree that the fruit is to appear on. And if my hands represent the branches of a tree, it's no good for an immature tree to try and produce fruit. Oh, oh, come on, fruit. Love, I know you're in there. Come on, love, manifest. So I quit slapping people around, you know. <laughs> quit losing my... I want for, you know, does it, does it any, is it any good for the tree to try and produce fruit? No tree does that. There's only one, one way for that tree to produce fruit. It has to become mature. Trees just do that. Dave would teach us by so many different parables. I call, we call them Dave parables, you know. Remember the, the deal about the, guy, the husband that would bring his wife her favorite breakfast? That went, that's okay. For, that's trying to produce fruit. Trying to produce love by your actions. It worked for a little while, but eventually, you know what happened? He burnt the toast or something, and she didn't like it, and boy, the deal's on again, you know, just like they were. But I'll never forget the first time I heard Dave say this. He said, it's not hard to love when love is what you are. Well, that's a mature tree. See, the, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. All of those come from maturity and not any other way. I remember the peach tree that my dad planted all those years ago, a sapling not, not even as tall as me, first year. It produced these tiny little peaches. Not much, about a golf ball, not even quite as big as a golf ball size, you know. And they never got any bigger, so finally at harvest time, I said, I'm going to try one of these peaches. And I went out there. <laughs> Somebody else has tried it. And I went, I went out there, and I picked one, peeled that thing, put it in my mouth. That was the most bitter, bitter thing I ever put in my mouth. You think, that's not a peach tree. It's a perfectly good peach tree. It's just not mature. So more and more, I'm understanding this message. Instead of us running around trying to produce fruit, there's really only one way to get there. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to mature that image. The Mark 4, the Word, Christ, sown in us. In that seed of Christ, the, the new nature, whatever you want to, however you want to describe it, when Christ in you is the image of the full tree. It's the image. It's there. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, it may come in as the smallest seed in your garden, but if you learn how to take care of it, it'll become a mighty tree where the, even the birds can come and lodge in the branches of it. It's all about maturity, allowing Christ. Of course, now that's John the Baptist. I must decrease. He must increase. Now, I know he was talking about something else, but that principle is exactly right. Galatians 2.20, that's where Paul said, if, if, well, I, it's me, I'm, I'm living. It's I, but it's really not I. It's, it's Christ in me, but it, hard to describe, see. And I'll finish with this. Again, listening to Pastor Dave, he says, we keep trying to get God to leave us alone. And we'll, when we pray or when we speak, just go over and do that, God. Just You go do it external from me. But that's not what Jesus told us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's going to be done through his body, and we are the body. 
He says, we keep trying to get God to leave us alone. Just let us stay the way we are and you just go do it, God. God says, no. No, I won't. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm still determined that all who come to Christ are going to be changed into that same image. You could say it another way. Would come to maturity. Christ would come to maturity in you. And when that happens, the fruit tree just produces fruit. It's not hard to love if that's what you are. It's not hard for joy if that's what you are. It's not hard for peace if that's what you are. That's what he is in us. It just needs to come to maturity. So there's nothing else to do except allow the Holy Spirit to do that. He, he will guide us into all truth. He's able to take us by the hand and get us where no man can take us. He'll get us there if we give him the time. See right there, I saw Mark 4 again. Read Mark 4 again. This time read it at the, because the distractions, the cares of this world, persecutions, afflictions, chasing after shiny things, which is the deceitful of riches, deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, fame, fortune. When he says all of these choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful, what that means is Christ never comes to maturity on the inside. You get, you get too busy, get distracted with good things or bad things. In Christ, it says that never, no fruit is brought to perfection. That, that word means maturity. Hmm. I'm seeing Mark 4. I can't read it now without that. I mean, that's, that's ultimately what it's about, is that the seed that God's sown in each one of us that has the full image of Christ that's what needs to come to maturity. But there's a few. Some 30. Some 60. Some 100 fold. I believe here it's going to be 100 fold. Let's don't settle for anything less. Don't get too busy. See the next parable. One of the, I think the very next parable in Mark 4. said the kingdom of God is like a man that sowed seed into the ground. Now this time think of it as Christ. We're the ground. God the Father sowed Christ, the seed, in us. He said the kingdom of God is like this. He rises and he sleeps, but that seed begins to grow. He knoweth not how. First the blade, there's 30. Then the ear, there's 60. But finally, the full corn in the ear. What is that? What's he teaching there? The fruit has to come to maturity. Don't stop it. Don't stop at any stage. You don't, you don't harvest. You don't stop until that seed comes to full maturity, the full corn in the ear. Then, then, for us, that's revival. He, know, he doesn't know how. The man can't make it happen. He grows. He sleeps night and day, and the seed grows. He doesn't know how. See, but God designed it to grow. God gave us precise instructions in the blueprint what to do in order for that seed to grow, to come to maturity. Let's double down and get it done. A redefining of the church. I only had this sentence so far, though. I know, I know part of what that redefining is. It's not a building. It's not an organization. It's not a club. It is the body of Christ. That's what the church is. It is the literal body of Christ. All right. We're going to go ahead and do the confessions now. Father, I worship you. I glorify you. I praise you. You're not a man that you could lie. You have exalted your word above your name. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. Therefore, I say, your glory is present at the prayer center. The blind see, the deaf hear. <laughs> the I saw a preacher on TV this last week. I've got to share this one with you. He was going, someone, someone here, he's just talking in a normal tone. Someone here is fighting 
a deafness in their ears. And he went, deafness in their ears. <laughs> and somebody, oh. <laughs> Precious, I loved it. I loved it so much. <laughs> deafness. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. Therefore, I say, your glory is present at the prayer center. <laughs> the blind see. The deaf hear. The lame walk. The dead are raised. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. A minimum of a thousand people. Mm are born again at the prayer center every week. We have a minimum of 500 intercessors who are holding up the message that has come to maturity. We are able to get along with each other while the Father works revival in our midst. We have that kind of worship that takes us beyond the veil of the flesh in order that we may worship in spirit and in truth. We worship you, Father, out of our new nature. And we give you family worship as your sons and daughters. Father, at the prayer center, those that come will see a people Transform to the nature of Christ. Father, we say, in the name of Jesus, no person ever leaves the prayer center the same way they came. Every person that comes receives a touch from the Good Shepherd. Father, those that come who are beaten down, discouraged, worn out, and tired, they won't leave that way. They'll be encouraged, strong, and mature. They'll leave standing upright, their shoulders squared, their heads held high, going forth as a mighty army to take this planet for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, your glory fills every service. Every person that comes drinks of your glory. They'll leave as earthen vessels filled with your glory, filled with your wisdom, filled with your love, filled with your grace, and anointed by your Spirit. They'll carry your presence with them, and they'll carry revival around this world. Father, we declare, we preach your gospel. We'll never settle for man's gospel. Only yours. It's the gospel that saves, the gospel that fills, and the gospel that heals. That's why we say, lost, be saved. Empty, be filled. Blind, see. Lame, walk. Deaf, hear. Maimed, behold. Dead, rise again. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's your gospel. We'll settle for nothing less. We're going for the gold. We have what we say. And we say at every service... The lost are saved. People are filled with the Holy Ghost. The blind see. The lame walk. The deaf hear. The maimed are made whole. And the dead are raised. In the name of Jesus. More than 12 legions of angels are loose to prepare the way for revival. Angels are dispatched to the four corners of the earth 
intercepting and stopping every mission and every assignment of the enemy that would bring circumstances against those who would come. Angels are changing those circumstances by rearranging them, causing money to come, and by changing schedules. We say every person that is to be here will be here in the name of Jesus. There is no devil big enough, no assignment crafty enough, no circumstances bad enough that will keep even one from being here. Father, we declare your house full. Angels are moving back. The forces of darkness over this region. They're opening up a window. A window of light. 25 miles in every direction. Both horizontally and vertically. There is a fortress of angels. Surrounding us to keep back the darkness. Father, angels are dispatched now. Softening the hearts where hurts have wounded. Where calluses have formed. Where walls of defenses have gone up. Angels are softening the hearts. And creating atmospheres. Where the people can hear the voice of their shepherd. Angels are preparing their hearts now. So they're already receivers when they arrive. From the first word spoken. From the first song sung. From the first prayer prayed. To the end of every service. The people are free to receive from your spirit. The assignments of all devils against the prayer center, the people of the prayer center, and the leadership of the prayer center, all those assignments are dismissed in the name of Jesus. I declare those plans null and void. Devil, we're taking Tulsa from you. In fact, we already have. <clears throat> Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. <clears throat> Not you. We're in authority here. Not you. Devil, get out of Tulsa. Take all your demons with you. The King of Kings has made a decree. And I am speaking in his stead. The king has declared. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. The king has decreed. Captives, you are free. Every person returns to his original inheritance. That is the born again trail. Father, you have restored our inheritance. And at the prayer center... The inheritance is not just known about. We don't just teach about it. But it's received, manifested, and seen. Father, you have restored our fellowship with you. The firstborn told us to pray. Father, your will be done on earth. Just as it is in heaven. As in heaven, so on earth. As in heaven, so in Tulsa. There are no lost people in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is saved. There are no sick people in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is healed. There are no demoniacs in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is delivered. And there are no poor people in heaven. 
Therefore we say, Tulsa is prospered. And Tulsa is blessed. We declare every captive free. Every wheelchair emptied. All of them. No exceptions. Every artificial help. Wheelchairs. Crutches. Canes. Hearing aids. Glasses. Stretchers. Bladder bottles. They may need them when they come. They won't need them when they leave. And we'll have them here as trophies. To the glory of Jesus the healer. All manner of sickness. Now we're going to have this. You hear me? We are going to have this. All manner of sickness. And all manner of diseases. Are healed. First time. Every time. All of them. No exceptions. Jesus, you healed them all then. You healed them all now. That's what we say. That's what we have. In the name of Jesus. Father, there are impartations of your spirit. We declare these are the most powerful. The most anointed. The most life-changing. The most revival producing services in history. Fresh anointings. Fresh giftings. Like never before since the book of Acts. Father, it's you doing the works. Therefore, all things are possible. Soul, my own soul. I command you. Believe this. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. And every backslider will come back to God. They'll never leave God again. So now, Father, in preparation, I forgive every person their trespasses against me. Father, forgive me all of my trespasses against you. I am freshly washed in the blood of the Lamb. In order that my record in heaven be perfect. Therefore I say, because of the blood, what Jesus did for me, according to my record in heaven, I have never failed God. I lay down my life that the life of Christ may be manifest in me. <laughs> I take no offense. I give no offense. And according to my record in heaven, I never have. At the prayer center, the mind of Christ is delivered to both the sheep and the shepherds. It is delivered with such simplicity and with such clarity that the wayfaring fool could not misunderstand it. Therefore I say, the people at the prayer center, and especially me, we all understand every word that Pastor Dave teaches. Now I'm going to keep this sentence in here, and we declare that Pastor Dave teaches. Now the reason I'm doing that, he taught me after he passed <laughs> from his teachings at the way. He's still teaching, and if you want to know the truth, he's still spearheading the charge into revival. And if you don't believe that, just listen to some of those teachings again that you think you know. I promise you, you you've matured some since the last time you heard those, and you're going to hear things like, well, when did Derek put that in? <laughs> when, when did they add that sentence? Because you just weren't mature enough to hear it the last time. You just weren't mature enough. I got an answer that David, st he's still teaching. So let's say it again. And we declare that Pastor Dave teaches. And he is still. Okay? All right. Oh, <laughs> every need is met. 
<laughs> gotta love Billy. No ma say that. Gotta love Billy. Okay. <laughs> no matter how large, <laughs> no matter how small, <laughs> there are no cases too hard. There are no cases too late. Whatever they come for to receive from Jesus, they get it, all of them, first time, every time, no exceptions. I declare every captive free, free in spirit, free in soul, free in body, all are delivered and all are restored. Father, you are provider. Angels are dispatched to gather in all of the finances and everything that is required. Things we know about now, things we don't even know about yet. Because you are the God who answers before we call. I speak against the strongholds of lack. And I declare an abundance, I declare abundance, abundance. Be, be in the name of Jesus. There, therefore, we say, there is no lack. We operate from abundance. We operate from surplus. We have all and abound with many baskets left over. We have such abundance. We can pay the way for many to come and many to go. And we send them out on prosperous journeys for God with abundance in a manner fitting for servants of the Lord. Our financial granaries are full because our king has found stewards he can trust. And I'm one of them. Father, if you need anything, come to my house first. Whatever you have need of, come to my house first. And all I need to know is my Lord has need of it. And it's yours. I've been bought with a price. My life is not my own. I am a first class servant. Lord, I lay all my possessions at your feet. And I say again, Lord, if you need anything I have, it's yours. I love you, Lord, with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, and all of my strength. The second commandment is like unto the first. I love my neighbor as myself, and I love my neighbor as you have loved me. I love my good neighbors. I love my bad neighbors. I love my mean neighbors, and I love my enemies. Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. Whatever you ask, that's what I do. I am your servant. I am your bond slave by my own free will choice. I serve you, Lord, by serving these people that you love so much. I serve the good people. I serve the bad people. I serve the mean people. And I especially serve your enemies because you're trying to save them all. You'd like to use me to do it. All that I have is yours. My time is yours. My body is yours. My family is yours. I own nothing. I am your bond slave. Use me as you will. You are provider for me, my family, and all that I have. And I am available for your use. We lift up the blood-stained banner over this city. Written in the blood of Jesus on the banner are these words. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. 
Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Tulsa is in revival. Tulsa is in revival. And where Jesus is Lord, the Father's will is done. Father, have your way. Not just 30-fold. Not just 60-fold. But 100-fold. Again, I say. Read that sentence again. Where Jesus is Lord, the Father's will is done. Father, have your way. Not just 30-fold. Not just 60-fold. But 100-fold. Again, I say. Lost, be saved. Empty, be filled. Captives, go free. Blind, see. Deaf, hear. Lame, walk. Maimed, be whole. Dead, rise again. In the name of Jesus. Father, thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. Forever, your will be done in Tulsa. Just as it is in heaven. As in heaven, so in earth. As in heaven, so in Tulsa. Tulsa is saved. Tulsa is saved. Tulsa is saved. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We have what we say in the name of Jesus. We have what we say in the name of Jesus. Who am I? I think Billy can go louder without a microphone than I can with one. Glory to God. Gave that megaphone. Father, we come to you now with our possibility box. Not our impossible box, our possible box. Father, we're not praying again for these that had the pictures on the box. Father, you already know they're on planet Earth. There's no help for them at all. But Father, we don't believe in impossible situations. We've already prayed and asked you, Lord, and you said to believe that we receive when we pray and we would have it. So we're thanking you, Lord, we shall see the full manifestation of the miracles and the healings on each and every one of these people. We'll see them in the land of the living. In Jesus' name. Father, for the prayer requests inside this box that are added to almost daily, we're just adding our faith to those that sent in these requests and thanking you, Lord, for answering every prayer that Jesus paid the price for them to have. And Father, if a stranger sent in a prayer request, somebody who's not yet born again, not yet in the family, not in the kingdom, doesn't matter if they're Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, agnostic, or anything else, if they had enough faith to send a prayer request here, and if that request is in line with your will, Father, we ask like Solomon asked, answer the prayer of the stranger. Father, do it in such a unique and unusual way that they'll have to know like we know that you are the only true and living God. And they can hear the gospel of your Son and be saved, Lord. Father, we pray for every prayer cloth that goes forward from this house and every every church, every fellowship connected with this vision. Father, you haven't changed at all. You're the same God today that you were in the book of Acts, and that's why we expect the same results. When when those claws are laid on the sick, they will recover. When they're laid on those that have devils, The devils will come out. That means in many cases, alcoholics will be delivered. Drug addicts will be instantly delivered. People with all kinds of mental disease, such as bipolar and schizophrenia and other things caused by devils, they'll instantly be back in their right mind. You'll turn the hearts of the children to the parents and the parents to the children. You put marriages back together, Lord, and many other such things you do because you have not changed at all. You're the same God today that you were then. Father, we're so grateful to know that Pastor Dave is safe with you. Father, we do lift up Rosalie and Tawny and Daniel, Johnny, all of the children, grandchildren, Father, all all of the Roberson house. Lift up Tim and Leah Stemple in all of their house, Lord, and all of the ministers, not only here at the prayer center and their families, but around the world that have 
joined with this, <coughs> excuse me, that have joined with this vision. We declare no, that includes the churches, that includes the buildings, that includes the staff, the congregations, their cars, and their dogs and cats. We declare no weapon formed against them will prosper, but everything they set their hand to do will prosper in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, last but not least, here we are. We're facing another week. We've got the same number of hours available to us as any president or any king. And if anything, I think our hours might be more important because of eternal things that we deal with. I just saw a revival in China. I just saw a revival in Russia. Now, right now, they're saber rattling, both of them, and it looks like they're going to align together, and maybe they will. But I'm telling you, God wants a revival in China. God wants a revival in Russia. Father, we pray for that exactly as you showed it. Father, we call forth revival in China. Pour your spirit out, Lord, on the people in China. Pour your spirit out, Father, on the people of Russia. Father, cause such a revival to come in the very fire of God that it cannot be denied. Lord, even change the leaders. Change them, Lord. If they won't change, cause them to be removed from power and bring in godly leaders. Father, we pray for a true outpouring of revival in China and Russia. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Father, help us be better stewards of our time. We are going to stand before you one day and give an accounting. <laughs> and if there's any people accountable, it's us. We're going to stand in front of you, give an accounting of how we stewarded this life you gave us. When we stand there, we want to be able to say like Paul did. We fought the good fight. We kept the faith. And we finished the race that you set in front of us. Father, we're so glad to know what our race is. It's revival. And Father, you will have your revival. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you agree with that, you can say, Amen, Amen.